Hmm. Hi everyone, my name is Cecilia Parks. I'm a librarian here at UVA coming to you from the floor of my apartment in Charlottesville. Um, I hope that you and your loved ones are all safe and healthy right now. Um, I know that you are probably busy working on research projects or final exams or other types of uh, big projects. Um, and so today what we're going to be talking about is how to find and access academic journal articles in library databases. Um, and it's worth noting that even though we're going to be talking specifically about academic journal articles today, which I know a lot of you are probably going to need for the kinds of projects that you're working on, there's also a lot of other types of information available through library databases beyond these academic journal articles. So if you think that you need some type of information or resource, uh, but you're not sure where to start or where to find it, I recommend checking out our subject guides or contacting your subject librarian. Um, and you should be able to get a good idea of where to start um, from either of those. One other thing that I want to mention before we dive into looking at specific resources uh, is access. Lucky for you, your access to these resources really hasn't changed if you're not on grounds anymore. These resources were all available online anyways. Um, all you'll have to do is go through the library website and you'll be asked to log in with your UVA computing ID and password through NetBadge. Very occasionally, you might have to use something called a VPN or virtual private network, which basically tricks the databases into thinking that you're on grounds rather than wherever you live. Um, that's pretty straightforward to use. You can Google UVA library VPN um, or contact us and we will help you get it set up. Not a problem. So with that said, we're going to go ahead and dive into looking at a specific database. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Okay, so here we are on the library homepage. Um, we are going to go ahead and click on research here at the top of the page. So there's a lot of different ways that you can access these databases. Um, a lot of them run through this research page. Uh, but if you, you can see, we have uh, subject guides here, which are really helpful, a place to start. We have um, all of our databases are listed here on the database A to Z page. But we're going to go over here under popular links and look at Academic Search Complete. Academic Search Complete is a great place to start your research, has a lot of different types of material, has a lot of different subjects in it. It's a good place to start. Um, one thing that's worth noting before we dive in here, though, is that um, all databases, even if they have different types of content or different subject coverage, they all sort of function the same way. Uh, so even though we're just going to be looking at Academic Search Complete today, there's a lot of uh, what the things that we talk about will sort of apply to whatever database you're using. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Academic Search Complete. Here's where, um, before you get to this page, you might be asked to sign in with your computing ID and password through NetBadge. I've already signed in today, so it's not doing that for me. Um, and so here we are at the um, main page of Academic Search Complete. Um, we're going to ignore all those search options for now. Um, you can go back and sort of play with them on your own uh, later. But for today, we're just going to be sort of looking at some of these more basic functions. Um, so the first thing that we want to do is we want to think about what search terms we actually are going to use. Um, if you're using Google, you know, if you're used to using Google, you know that um, you can take your whole research question or a whole sentence or topic and just plop it into Google, and Google knows what to do with that. Um, unfortunately, library databases are slightly less smart. We can't afford Google's algorithm. Um, so you want to be thinking in terms of keywords when you're searching in library databases. Um, keywords are essentially the most important words or phrases related to your topic or research question. And they're usually much smaller than, than the topic of the research question itself. So for example, if our topic was um, how do we ensure equity in online learning, um, two of the keywords that we pull from that might be equity and online learning. And so you can see that we have our two separate keywords that are sort of referring to different aspects of your question, um, and they're going in two separate boxes. So now we're going to go ahead and click search here. I'm going to think about it for a second. And you can see that we got about 22,000 results, almost 23,000. This is a pretty good number for this database. You know, it might seem small when you compare it to the kinds of results you get through Google, but it's pretty good for, for this. Um, it's actually quite a lot, and we really want to narrow that number down. Um, because one thing that Google is really good at is figuring out exactly what you want, putting the, that, those resources or those results right at the top of your results list. Um, library databases like Academic Search Complete um, will show you a slightly broader range of things, and they're less good at sort of figuring out what exactly you want. So we want to narrow this down so we're not trying to dig through 22,000 uh, results, because that's a lot. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over here on the left-hand side of the page, 
And we're going to look at some of the options that we have. We are certainly not going to go into all of these today. Um, I would recommend um, checking them out uh, on your own. Uh, but what we're going to do today is we are going to limit to articles published in the last five years. So 2015 to 2020. Uh, we're going to let it update. And then we're going to limit to scholarly peer reviewed journals because we know we're looking for those academic sources um, or scholarly peer reviewed journals. So with those two clicks, we've gotten rid of about two thirds of our results. We can see we're down to about um, seven, 8,000 results here. Um, and we could keep going. And in fact, normally I would encourage you to do that to continue to narrow your search down. But for the purposes of this example, we'll go ahead and stop there. And we're gonna go ahead and check out this first result here. Okay, so you can see on this page, we have the title, we have some of the information that you would need to write a citation for it. We have an abstract, which is like a summary of the article, very helpful. Uh, and if you scroll down a little bit, we actually see that we have the full text of the article on this page. However, I really don't like reading on this page. I don't think the formatting is very good. So I'm gonna go over here and look on the left-hand side of the page for the other options that I have to access the full text of this article. So we see HTML full text, which is what's on this page. We also see PDF full text. This is my favorite option. And if you see PDF full text, I really recommend that that's what you choose um, because this gives you a very nicely formatted PDF document that you can download. You can print it at that point. It's yours. We're not going to take it away from you. You don't have to try and come back through the website and find it. Um, it's just there. So you can download it here and do whatever you want with it. Uh, and it's worth noting that um, on whatever database you're in, it might not always say PDF full text. Sometimes it will say download PDF or just PDF, um, but that's what you probably want to look for. If there's that option there, that's the one you want to pick. But sometimes you won't have an HTML full text or a PDF full text option. Instead, you'll just see this find at UVA button. So we're going to click on find at UVA and see what happens. So it takes us to another page on the library website. It gives us a little bit of information that we mostly already saw about the article. And then under your results, it will show you how, to, how you can access the full text of this article. The first one is Academic Search Complete, which we already knew about, we've already looked at. The second one is Wiley Blackwell, the journal publisher. So we're gonna click on Get Article here and see where it takes us. Okay, so it's taken us again to the journal website. Um, we can see that we have the full text of the article again, just like we had here, or on the Academic Search Complete. And then we also have this PDF option. If you wanted to download this article as a PDF, you could do that here. So you have a couple different ways to access the full text of this article. One thing I would say is that sometimes it does take a couple of clicks. You have to jump through a couple of different hoops to get to the full text of the article. Uh, but I would recommend that you sort of persist through that, even if it seems like, oh my God, why am I clicking this something again? Um, and to ask for help uh, if you're not sure how to get access to something or if your link seems broken or if you're not able to access it, please let us know and we can usually figure out a way to get that, get that for you. A couple of other things I want to point out on this page. Um, over here on the right-hand side of the page, we have some tools, some of which are more useful than others. Um, I personally really like this email option. This lets you uh, <laughs> email this item to yourself or to a friend. One thing that you want to keep in mind is that um, it can be really, really difficult to retrace your steps and come back and try and find this article again later. Um, so as you're going along, if you see an article that you think even might possibly be helpful for you. Um, I would encourage you to email it to yourself, save it as a PDF with a name that you'll remember, um, get all the citation information, get a permalink, something like that so it's easy for you to come back to this particular page or the full text of the article. So emailing it to yourself is a good option. Um, if you go over here under permalink, you can get a, a link here that you can copy and paste. The link up here at the top of your browser is not what you, it's not going to be helpful. It's not going to bring you back to this page. Um, only this permalink option will do that. So if you're using a link or if you're saving a link, um, make sure that you're using this permalink option here. Uh, the last feature that I want to point out is the site feature. Um, so you can, we'll scroll down to the APA. So you could uh, copy and paste this citation right into your works cited page or your bibliography or your reference list, um, which is a very helpful feature. Uh, you will want to double check this citation before you turn your paper in because there's usually something wrong with this citation, um, but it is easier to check that than it is to write your own citation from scratch. Let's see. So those are a couple of the tools. I'm going to go back to the result list and just make a couple final comments before we wrap up. 
one thing that I would really recommend um, is that you try different keywords, try different combinations of keywords, look in different places, um, be creative with the search terms and search strategies that you're using. Um, and be patient, try more than you would, especially with like a Google search. Um, there's a lot of stuff out there. Um, and I, it, it's gonna make your life easier if you take the time to do some thorough searching to find the best articles for your project, rather than just the first couple that seem sort of vaguely relevant. The other piece of advice that I have um, is to ask for help if you need it. Um, these kinds of skills, using library databases, doing research, these are skills that take practice. Um, nobody expects you to already have developed those skills. Um, and we're here to help you, and we're here to help you do that. We're here to help you learn how to do all of this. Um, so if you have any questions about coming up with a topic, refining your topic, coming up with keywords, choosing a database, um, finding sources in a database, accessing sources, citing sources, really anything along the research process and um, we're more than happy to help you do that so you can click on ask a librarian at the top of this page and this will take you to our live chat um, when the chat uh, during the hours when the chat is live and then under that you see we have email um, phone you can contact your subject librarians all kinds of good stuff here so please please do help us if you have any or ask us for help if you have any questions all right. Um, well, like I said, uh, please ask us for help if you have questions. We're happy to hear from you. In fact, uh, because we can't see you on grounds, we would love to hear from you. Um, again, I hope that you and your loved ones are safe and healthy and good luck with the rest of your finals.